in light of what we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, This is so important right here. You are going to see this passage right here, perhaps in a different way. If you've never made the connection before, you're going to see, wow, that looks like it's describing the rapture of the church. But how could it be describing the rapture of the church when it's in the Old Testament of the Bible? Let's go ahead and read this. Isaiah chapter 26, verses 19 through 21. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. The prophet Isaiah is speaking of himself when he's talking about his dead body shall arise. Okay, Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Now, when the earth casts out the dead, which way does it cast it? It casts it up. The, the earth is going to cast out the dead. It's going to cast them up. Up and out. Now watch this. Verse 20. The Lord says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Do you know what that word indignation is also translated as? The fury, the wrath, depending on which translation you're reading. I'm reading from the King James Version right now. But what the Bible says here is come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation or the wrath be overpassed now why is that necessary why is it necessary to be hidden now some of you can think of different verses right now where it talks about the lord providing a hiding place and how he he's going to hide us okay but right now we're in isaiah chapter 26 verses 20 uh, 19 through 21 in verse 21 it says for behold here's the reason why the word for can also mean because when he says hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed it's answering the question that you've got to be wondering why is it going to be necessary for us to hide ourselves for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed? The question is answered in verse 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Thank you for joining us. While you're waiting for the broadcast to begin, please go ahead and tap on the subscribe button or click subscribe to subscribe to this channel and also there's a bell which if you tap on the bell it will let you know when new videos are uploaded to the channel or when a live stream is being conducted when you tap on the bell to receive notifications there's an option to receive all notifications make sure that you tap that and we'll be getting started shortly When you look at what the Bible has to say regarding the times in which we're living right now, there is simply no mistaking that we are living in prophetic times. These are the last days of the present age. There is no question about it. I'm not saying that it's the end of the world, but it's definitely the last days of the present age. Things are going to be changing soon. And the most important thing that you can do right now is to make sure that you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Why don't we just begin with that? Yes, we're going to go over headlines that are resembling themes in Bible prophecy, but let's just go ahead and start off with the most important thing 
that you can do if you have not already done so, and that is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. When Jesus Christ died a substitutionary death on the cross, He paid the price for you to be put back in your proper place. And your proper place is the place in which you are in right standing with God. It begins with repentance. What does repentance mean? It means to turn away from sin and turn to the Lord and to receive what He has already accomplished, the gift that He has for you. When He died a substitutionary death, He actually purchased your redemption. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are a new creation. And not only that, but you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. I believe that if you just look at some of the specifics in terms of what is happening, you'll realize that the time is short. We need to be looking up and it is It's time, it's time to get ready because the time is short. We're going to be looking at some different articles that will convey some of the things that you are already well aware of, and that is that we are living in prophetic times. We're seeing in today's headlines those things of which the Hebrew prophets, the Lord Jesus himself, and the apostles in the early church wrote about. And it's almost like the things that they described were like a time capsule that is suddenly being opened. And all of a sudden, everything that we have been seeing with respect to uh, those things which resemble themes in Bible prophecy, it seems like they're accelerating. It seems like they're just coming faster and faster, um, like labor pains, labor pangs on a woman in travail. All right, thank you for your feedback there. I, I'm seeing, okay, a note here from Sean. I don't hear audio on it if you started it already. Okay, I think I know what I need to do. Uh, let's see here. Zephaniah chapter 1. The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hizkiah, in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast, I will consume the fowls of the heaven, and the fishes of the sea, and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near, and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung." Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Okay, now I'm going to just go ahead and pause the audio right there. And you see how Zephaniah chapter 1 is actually describing the day of the Lord in details that 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 does not even begin to go into. I mean, it says that there would be sudden destruction, yes, but you see how in Zephaniah chapter 1, 
it goes into a lot more detail with respect to the day of the Lord and the wrath that characterizes it. Okay, now, the reason why I brought up this right here is, you know, I hear people say sometimes that they're just going to uh, go out to the, the woods with their bug out bag and different things like this. But, you know, with all due respect to the preppers, how do you prep for this? Why would you want to even be here if the Lord has provided an escape? This is what the day of the Lord is going to be like. Now, I'm looking at the uh, the bandwidth here, and it looks like I've got uh, red, orange, yellow. Looks like it dropped down. So I'm going to check over here just to see if I still have you guys over here. Uh, it says, warning, the stream's current bit rate is lower. I'm going to have to see what I can do about that. But um, if you can still see the video, can you let me know in the comments? And I will continue. I'm seeing green. It drops to yellow and red. I apologize for the bandwidth issues. Kind of choppy. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. Okay. I'm just going to wait for green. Looks like I'm... Okay, looks like I got green again on this end. I'm going to trust that it'll come through okay on that end. But see, what we have right here in Zephaniah chapter 1 is a description of the day of the Lord, which when you hear people talking about, well, they'll just prep and take their bug out bag to the, the hills and so forth. <sighs> again, the question is, is a backup battery unit going to be adequate when the Lord himself is saying that he would consume man and beast, he will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked, and that he will cut off man from off the land. If the Lord is saying that he is going to make a point of consuming man and beast, then what good is a backup power generator going to do anyone at that point? What we're supposed to come away with here, what we're supposed to take from this, is that the day of the Lord is going to be like no other and the wrath that is going to be revealed is such that you just don't want to be here for that i'm going to go uh, to revelation chapter 6 once again we're just putting some parameters in place so that people can truly understand what is coming now in revelation chapter 6 I'm going to go ahead and uh, it says excellent connection. So it looks like uh, we're, we're back here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start from verse 12. And it says here, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. 
scrolling down a little further what we have here is and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains verse 16 and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb now notice this for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand friends how many great days of his wrath do you suppose there are how many i mean you know i believe that what we have here is the Apostle John, or his Hebrew name, Yohanan, the Apostle John describing something that another prophet saw and described in detail, a Hebrew prophet by the name of Ezekiel, where the point-for-point point correlation between this passage in Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17, is remarkably similar to what we find in Ezekiel chapter 38. Now, you go ahead and take a look at this for yourself as we scroll down here to Ezekiel chapter 38. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down in particular to verses 18. Through 23. Basically, what happens here is Israel is invaded, and on that day, the Lord describes some things. He says some things through the prophet Ezekiel, which in verses 18 through 23, there is a remarkable similarity between some of the things that we find in this passage within Ezekiel and what we just read in Revelation chapter 6. I believe that the correlation between these things, for example, the Lord is speaking about His fury. He says that His fury will come up in His face. Remember in Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 through 17, what the people were saying, the people who were on the earth at the time that that great earthquake in Revelation chapter 6 took place and mountains were being moved out of their places, what did they say? Well, let's go back over and take a look. And they said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from what? Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Notice the references to the face and the wrath. Now we're going to go back over here to Ezekiel chapter 38. What, the, what, is, what does the Lord say right here? He says that, it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God. Notice what he says that his fury, that his fury shall come up in his face. You see right here, that reference is in both passages. But in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, verses 12 through 17, in that passage, there's also a reference to the wrath. Okay? And in both places, those passages talk about the wrath. The wrath of the Lamb, and the Lord is referring to his, the, the fire, the fire of his wrath 
right here. In both passages, we have a great shaking in the land of Israel. Okay, or an earthquake, which it says that all men on the face of the earth would feel it. It says right here, all the men that are, that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at his presence. Okay, so now I'm highlighting this so that you can see the correlation between these point for point similarities in both passages. Now I'm going to go back over to Revelation chapter 6, and whereas it says all men on the face of the earth in Ezekiel chapter 38, notice what it says in Revelation chapter 6. It says it slightly differently, but it's still saying the same thing. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the uh, chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man. In other words, everybody. Okay? Hid themselves. Okay, but again, that you have the reference in both passages to the mountains. You have, again, point for point, the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Let me scroll that down. The face of him that sitteth on the throne. The Lord refers to his face, his fury, showing in his face over here. That his fury shall come up in his face. Okay? So, what you have right here is, again, point for point, so many correlations between the earthquake that takes place in Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 18 through 23, and also that which is described in Revelation chapter 6. Verses 12 through 17. The similarities are very strong. Now, what I want to do is at this point come back over to where we had left off in this article right here. Now, we, we covered a lot in this, and I'm looking at the uh, duration, and I know that some of you may have come on. Um, later than others in terms of the the video and i want to make sure that we keep this to a manageable size but what i'm going to do is once again skip across just a couple of these tabs here now there's this article on unsealed the link to this is in the description of the video so that you can go over and read this article uh, the link to this article is also in the description of this video and we're going to spend some time on both of these articles another tab that I have open which I will scroll back up to the top and you can see if we start after the ad that's at the top you'll see a series of videos Understanding the Rapture, Irrefutable Proof for a Pre-Tribulation Rapture. you got Part 1, Part 2, Part 3. Okay. And if I haven't said it in the past 10 minutes or so, I love you guys. But most importantly, the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. And He has provided us with promises in His Word so that we could encourage one another. He wants us to encourage one another with these words. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and refer you to this right here. I want to thank you for joining me in this live stream Bible study. And since we covered some of the chapters that provide the framework, as it were, for the, the prophetic backstop, as it were, and why the day of the Lord comes after the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church has to take place before the coming wrath. And also note that there's an immediacy 
of that wrath coming when we talk about sudden destruction in First Thessalonians chapter 5, when it's describing the day of the Lord there, and it says that sudden destruction comes upon them and they shall not escape. So you have to understand that from the get-go, after the rapture of the church takes place, everything is going to change. It's not going to be about backup battery systems and bug-out bags, okay? It's not going to be about how much filtered water you have that you can take up to the hills. No, because the Lord says that He is the one He is going to be consuming both man and beast off of the face of the earth. You have to understand that it's not an issue of prepping bottles of water, bug-out bags, and batteries and flashlights and stuff like that. It's about recognizing that the Lord has provided a way of escape. Sometimes people speak against it, but we need to lovingly just point them to what the scriptures have to say, the patterns that are in his word, the examples that the Lord himself gave. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up one last passage. One last passage that I just, I believe, is going to uh, reinforce the perspective here. We're going to go ahead and pull up Isaiah chapter 26, verses 19 and 20. Okay. Actually, let's go ahead and extend that out to uh, 21. In light of what we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, this is so important right here. You are going to see this passage right here perhaps in a different way. If you've never made the connection before, you're going to see, wow, that looks like it's describing the rapture of the church, but how could it be describing the rapture of the church when it's in the Old Testament of the Bible? Let's go ahead and read this. Isaiah chapter 26, verses 19 through 21. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. The prophet Isaiah is speaking of himself when he's talking about his dead body shall arise. Okay, Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Now, when the earth casts out the dead, which way does it cast it? It casts it up. The, the earth is going to cast out the dead. It's going to cast them up, up and out. Now watch this. Verse 20. The Lord says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Do you know what that word indignation is also translated as? The fury, the wrath, depending on which translation you're reading. I'm reading from the King James Version right now. But what the Bible says here is, Come, my people, Enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation, or the wrath, be overpassed. Now, why is that necessary? Why is it necessary to be hidden? Now, some of you can think of different verses right now where it talks about the Lord providing a hiding place and how he he's going to hide us okay but right now we're in Isaiah chapter 26 verses 20 uh, 19 through 21 
in verse 21, it says, for behold, here's the reason why. The word for can also mean because. When he says, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed, it's answering the question that you've got to be wondering, why is it going to be necessary for us to hide ourselves for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed? The question is answered in verse 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. In other words, so many people are going to be, uh, let's just put it this way, um, they're not even going to be able to keep up with uh, bearing the number of the slain. That's what this verse is telling us. But look at what it's saying. It says, For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place. Okay, so from the standpoint of what we have between these verses right here, come my people, in verse 20, enter thou into thy chambers, is looking very similar to something that the Lord said in the New Testament of the Bible. Do you guys mind if I just go on to one more verse to make one more connection for this live stream Bible study? I know it's gone long, but there's one more. Can I get can I get an amen? Somebody have an amen? I love you guys. Amen. I'm just gonna wait for maybe a comment. I can go. To, I, we can wrap this up. <laughs> right, Eric. Thank you. I'm looking at your comment right there. Yeah. He, Given the choice, why would anybody want to make it through the tribulation if you can escape beforehand? The only reason why somebody would think in terms of toughing it out is because they have no idea that this time is going to be characterized by the wrath of God himself. It's not just going to be toughing it out. It's going to be, you just don't want to be here. Not when the Lord has provided a way of escape. No. You don't want to be here. Okay, so I got an amen. Do I have an amen there? Okay, all right, praise the Lord. I'm going to go with an amen. There's one last passage before we wrap this up that I want to uh, share with you. Compare now Isaiah chapter 26, verses 19 through 21, but especially verse 20 with John chapter 14. And we're going to go ahead and pull this up. Okay, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, you know what? I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to bring back up something that. Uh, yeah, Amen. Pray. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to bring this up here. Okay, here we go. Sean, thank you for uh, verifying valid, um, verifying that the audio was coming through on the second attempt there. We're going to go to John chapter 14, and uh, hopefully the audio will still come across here. Chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause that right there for a moment and compare it once again to what the Lord said in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20, where he's saying, Come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut your doors behind you. The imagery that we have available in the Old Testament prophecies of the Bible is corresponding with what the Lord says right here in John chapter 14. I'm going to scroll it back up right here. We, we have to include verse 1 in this, but I want you to see verses 2, one, verses 1, 2, and 3, really. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, include every, There we go. We've got it all right there. Okay. The Lord Jesus begins by saying, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Praise God. Amen. You, you believe in God and you believe in the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. What he is telling you right here is that in the Father's house are many mansions. We could call them chambers. Okay, but what he's saying right here is corresponding with what the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 26. Verse 20, praise the Lord. This right here is a correspondence between two passages in the Bible, both Old Testament and New Testament confirming that the Lord has prepared a place for us and a place for us where our hearts do not have to be troubled he says, let not your heart be troubled. Your heart does not have to be troubled when you know that the Lord has promised that he has not appointed you unto wrath. Praise God. Praise God. Dear friend, I want to draw your attention to the most important page on the Why Shall Understand. Tap on the menu, it'll toggle, and you can see the gospel. The gospel means the good news, and it is an accounting of the life of Jesus of Nazareth and his Hebrew name being Yeshua, which means the Lord saves. It's summed up in a single verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. There's a video that I want you to take a look at on this page. It's called The ABCs of Salvation. Tap and watch that video please there's another video which if you tap on this it'll take you to a website where you'll have an opportunity to watch a three hour dramatization of the gospel of john i encourage you to watch it with your family it is so well done it's true verse for verse to that which is written in the gospel of john you know the name of jesus you know his hebrew name is yeshua which once again means the lord saves now that in and of itself, I mean, it makes you think, wow, you shall call him Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. So awesome. What we have right here, friends, are some verses in the Bible referred to as the four spiritual laws or the Roman road, at least the way that they're organized right here. And what I want you to do is read through these verses. Understand, first of all, that God loves you. We already read John 3.16, but I encourage you to read these verses. Read them with your family. You see number two right here. Man is sinful and separated from God. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Law number three, Jesus Christ is God's only provision for man's sin. Law number four, we must individually receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. After you read the verses on this page, my friend, what I want to draw your attention to is a prayer of salvation. Now, this is an example, okay? This is an example. But I believe that if you pray this prayer sincerely, God will hear your prayer and you will be saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 13, for whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what this prayer is all about. You know, just before I go, I want to encourage you once again to click on 
and visit any one of these links for resources available to you through the Why Shall Understand. And it's been a joy to share with you the Word of God as we consider current events, Bible prophecy, and the Gospel. God bless.